take a moment and look at this ink painting that appears in the slide. What do you think it portrays? The world around us is composed of many scenes and phenomena like this. The painting is one that I saw for the first time in Japan over 30 years ago, and it captured my imagination at that time. It's called Blind Men Crossing the Bridge by Hakuan Ikaku, 1685 to 1768. This is a visual representation of crossing over to enlightenment. Please notice that the log bridge does not quite touch the far side. How are we to navigate this? How is this blind, these three blind men supposed to navigate it? And notice, by the way, that one of the blind men put his sandals on his staff and he's gently feeling his way along while another one is with his hands feeling the sides of the log, and yet another one is negotiating the log with his staff. Now you see it, don't you? It's also a reminder that the world that we think we see is not always what it really is, the reality. This ink painting reflects how I feel these days regarding the world around me. That is to say, in the same way that the blind men crossing the log have some apprehension, some anxiety, they're unsure of how to negotiate, how to navigate what is in front of them. And so I feel it that way with the COVID and the Delta variant that we see around us right now. How do we make plans for the Sangha? How do we know whether when we meet next week, we should be, well, I already know, when we meet next week, and I hope that we have many people here, I think while we're in the hondo, we will have to be masked. On the other hand, we're going to be having potluck dinner, and I have to request that everyone be vaccinated that attends. That's the rule anyway, if you attend the in-person services. I don't recognize what I thought I understood about the nature reality not so long ago. Sometimes I prefer to ponder the universe, the cosmos, the physical heavens in which this planet exists. It's easier to do that than pondering my neighbor down the road who shows intolerance towards, well, many things. Last week, we discussed the middle way between extremes and as a result, I realized that in another fashion, the middle way exists. Contemplating the cosmos in relation to humanity and all other sentient beings, I understand that all we see around us is composed of the same stardust that we see when we look up into the sky on a clear night. Our skin and bones are made of the same stuff as that star so many billions and billions of light years off in the distance. The trees on the hill across the road, the swallows front flying around eating insects, the neighbor down the road is made of the same stardust that I am. That's one extreme. Then there is the person that I speak with at a social event who clearly does not share the same reality that I do regarding receiving a vaccination, whether an election was fairly won. What, does ind what do individual rights mean? And that's the other end of the spectrum. So I try to come back to the middle way and recognize that we, you, me, and everyone listening to me right now, as well as all sentient beings, are made of the same stardust and living in a provisional world that is filled with contention and discord. That explains why Tendai Buddhism, the, excuse me, the Tendai Buddhist Institute, our temple, is involved in outreach to the interfaith community, the ethnic and diverse communities that we find ourselves in. By immersing ourselves in assisting others and working cooperatively, we are experiencing the cosmic forces that bind us together and negotiate the differences that set us apart. 
In the first part of our discussion today, I asked the question, what is the most important Buddhist teaching to you in your daily life? For me, living a life in which shunyata and the conditional world are ultimately one in the same and yet not the same, different and not different, takes me beyond confusion and hopefully, hopefully brings me to the other shore. Gate gate para gate parasam gate bodhisvaha. If you want to decode our community's deep seated fibers, we must go and see the world and explore the significant distinctions and resemblances. To find out the inner self and understand our internal murmurings, we must learn to reach out to others. This is by Eric Pevernaji. The artist, Eric, is fascinated by the human condition. He wants to comprehend the, ha comprehend the how and the why of things and the intricacies of relationships. Being interested in how we turn surviving into living. He also likes creating good vibrations and displaying the truth beyond appearances. <laughs> 